All right, I found this video fitting for today. Uh, I'm actually driving our navigator to the dealer right now to get a recall done. Not one recall, two recalls. And I actually got a few other things looking at. But point of today's video is to kind of talk about the automotive industry and the quality. And is this really low quality or what are driving all these problems you're starting to see in vehicles? I, I know for me as a consumer of buying vehicles, it's really frustrating. I mean, I'm kind of annoyed right now that I'm actually having to drive to the dealership to go get a recall done on my vehicle and actually two recalls. But I figure while it's there, I'll make the most of it, get an oil change, tire rotation, all that jazz. So are new cars less reliable? That's the question. Um, I actually have to take my 24 Raptor also to the dealer tomorrow. Um, when the truck was delivered, this wasn't the dealer's fault. Um, it actually, the rear bumper, the, the plastic cover that goes over the step in the rear bumper was actually damaged. It looks like during the transport mode or something that they damaged this piece. Now, I should be more upset about it because it's kind of ridiculous, the most expensive vehicle Ford makes. and. You're having to have parts that were damaged during transport. I feel like I've almost gotten used to this sort of story that vehicles just come now with issues. I mean, for instance, my 2022 Toyota Sienna, when I got it, there's all kinds of lights on in the dash and the uh, blind spot monitoring and the reverse sensing system wouldn't work correctly on a brand new Toyota. And what cracked me up about the whole situation with the Toyota is the dealership didn't have a fix. They told me it's because my bumper was dirty but yet I went and power washed it and there was no dirt on the bumper. And so come to find out, a lot of people in northern climates where the weather gets cold, the reverse sensing systems on these Toyota Siennas, specifically in the time frame of the vehicles uh, I owned, they don't work in cold weather. And we proved it because we took it on vacation one time down to South Carolina. And once we got down there and the weather warmed up above 38 degrees, sensors work perfect. Head back to Michigan, lights come back on in the dash. Summertime comes in Michigan, lights go off for six months. Wintertime comes, lights come back on. So it had nothing to do with dirt. It had to do with some sensitivity in cold weather with the Toyota sensors. But are all these new vehicles just less reliable? I mean, it's pretty frustrating how expensive these new cars are, and it seems like it's problems. But I think it's bigger than that. If you look into inflation and when cost of goods goes up, believe it or not, one of the things that happens when cost of goods goes up, the quality actually gets worse because companies are trying to stretch their research and development and engineering and quality teams to squeak out efficiencies in their supply chain to maybe start accepting products that they normally wouldn't because they wouldn't hit the spec, but they're trying to offset any and all costs they can to reduce the inflation burden. So I'm not surprised that vehicle costs went up 50% in the last four years, uh, in some cases more, and in some cases maybe only 20, 30%, but it went up drastically, but yet people are having more problems with cars post COVID. I think some of it beyond inflation is the technology in these new cars. I mean, you look at a 24 F-150, now on a 302A package, it's just standard that Blue Cruise comes with the vehicle. That's incredible. That's some really high-tech features that in basically one step above a work truck, you've now got hands-free driving. That's incredible. Three years ago, you had to get a limited trim platform. You had to get, three years ago, you had to get a limited or a Laramie high level and then spend extra for all that technology. So I'm wondering now if we're starting to see more of these problems because more of this technology is out there, more sophisticated sensors, not really sure. But what I know is I'm heading to the dealer right now for two different recalls, one a backup camera and another there's just not a fix for right now. They're just letting you know there's a recall. And it's kind of annoying. But the sad part is I'm not seeing a brand right now that's not having these issues. I mean, I'm hearing issues with Ford, GM, Chrysler, Nissan, Honda, Toyota. Uh, I'm hearing about issues with Teslas. We got family members and friends with Teslas that are having issues. We have a friend right now with a Rivian that's had issues with that. So none of these vehicles are without problem. I don't even see an engine. 
option that seems to be like the most consistent. You know, some people might say maybe a gas engine is a little more reliable than a diesel. I think in some cases that might be true. In other cases though, I don't know if that is actually true. If you look at like, uh, maybe like General Motors heavy duty trucks, they've got a pretty sophisticated direct injection fuel system now the past few years with their trucks. Whereas maybe like a Ford heavy duty truck or Ram heavy duty, they're running a port fuel system with a low pressure fuel pump with basic fuel injectors. What are these direct injection trucks gonna be like that see construction use and commercial use once they get 100, 150,000 miles on them? At that point, are these fuel systems gonna be really expensive and then people will wish they would have bought a diesel truck? Not really sure. Uh, but it is really frustrating as a consumer to be having these continued issues. Um, I've got some friends saying, I'm keeping my 10 year old truck because I know it, it's been reliable, I can work on it easier, parts are easier to repair. I can't blame them. I do think that owning a new vehicle out of warranty is kind of scary because if you look at some of the new vehicles, some of these tail lights are $2,000, $2,500 if you crack a light or if a LED bulb inside goes bad. Whereas five, 10 years ago, you would have blamed that on maybe like a European car, like a, an Audi or a BMW, where if you have a tail light quit working, it's a $2,500 repair. You can see this now on a Yukon or Suburban or a Ford Super Duty or a Toyota Tundra. These things are all expensive. All this technology in these new cars is creating for very expensive maintenance. And the sad part about this is every mechanic that works on these vehicles knows this. So it's just making mechanic rates go up also. So the cost of these new cars and all the bougie features is just creating kind of a pain in the butt. And I'm starting to think maybe it makes sense if you got two drivers in your household, you just keep a third vehicle because if one vehicle's down, you need a reliable vehicle in the household or you need one that's always under warranty. It's really frustrating. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing it getting better quite yet. I hope it's soon. I'm just not seeing it. And that brings me to the last part. I'm not seeing prices coming down. I don't really see quality changing on this stuff because these vehicles are getting more and more advanced. You're seeing more autonomous driving systems across these different car manufacturers. Now most of these cars have direct injection or direct injection and poor fuel injection. And then if you said, well, I'm gonna go an electric vehicle, there's a lot of thought of, man, an electric vehicle, if things are working correctly, in a lot of ways, it should be more reliable than an internal combustion engine vehicle. You don't have a transmission to worry about. You don't have oil changes. You don't have spark plugs, wires for the engine. But what you do have is a sophisticated high voltage wire system. You've got inverters, you've got a lot of other technology. So I do think in the future, I hate to admit it because I am I like internal combustion engine and I think they're cool. I like the sound. I, they're just simple, much, they're much more simple to me than an electric vehicle. But I do think in the future, I do think electric vehicles will probably be more reliable and more simple. And if you think back, I think about people that were buying vehicles, you know, grandparents maybe 60 years ago, and that's when vehicles were switching from carbureted over to fuel injection. And people were like, I will never own a fuel injected vehicle. You'll not be able to work on them. They're gonna be terrible. They won't be reliable, blah, blah, blah. Man, fast forward and think about, you're not having to rebuild carburetors every 10,000 miles. They start good in the winter time. People rarely have issues with fuel injectors. I'm starting to wonder, are we in that era where right now maybe the electric vehicles, they are not more reliable than an internal combustion engine vehicle, but in 10 years from now, are people gonna be like, yeah, I've got 400,000 miles on my Tesla, no big deal. And people will treat that like an 80,000 mile gas vehicle. Not really sure. It's gonna be interesting to see how reliability in these things go. But what I'm getting frustrated with is I'm getting tired of getting things in the mail that says there's a recall or there's this problem or that problem. So to switch course a little bit, I actually kind of got annoyed with quality and recall issues on the Polaris snowmobiles I've been buying. And I've been running Polaris snowmobiles for 14 years. I've never actually had one leave me stranded, which is good. But I've had a lot of really little annoying problems with these things. And in the last three years specifically, tons and tons of recalls, stop ride, uh, fire risk, this, that, it's annoying. 
And that's why I said, you know what, I'm done with Polaris. I sold my Polaris sled. It was a nice sled, but I'm just kind of annoyed with it. And believe it or not, I'm going back to running five-year-old snowmobiles that I can work on a little easier. They're out of warranty. And I'm gonna make the most of it. And I'm starting to wonder, does it make sense to just do that same thing with cars now? Should people start thinking about, you know, I'm gonna buy a five-year-old vehicle and I'll just keep up on maintenance and run it. I'm not really sure you know, teach their own. I, I prefer not to have to work on vehicles, so whatever option that is. Anyhow, I just thought it was interesting. It was on my mind. I was thinking about this as I'm driving my vehicle in to get these two recalls done. It just made me think, man, it's like I've got literally three days in a row that I got to go to two different dealerships to drop off one vehicle, get a loaner, come back to another dealer the next day, drop that truck off, get another loaner. We're gonna literally have both of our vehicles in this week getting recalls and issues fixed from when it was delivered to, to me. So kind of annoying. You know, I feel for the people that are kind of annoyed like myself with recall issues, quality issues. And I'm hearing stories about people buying brand new Rivians and they're sitting at a dealer for six, seven weeks. I've heard same things actually about a Mustang Mach-E recently, which is really disappointing. Been in a dealership for five weeks, getting some issues fixed. So I'm gonna keep watching the data on the different manufacturers as far as recalls. As the technology increases, I'm convinced we're gonna be having these issues, unfortunately. I hope you liked the video. If you do, feel free to like, give me a thumbs up. Have a great one.